like to share a few of the highlights with you about our recipient before I turn over the mic to her. Evelyn Lundberg Stratton retired in 2012 after 16 years of service on the Supreme Court of Ohio bench. One of her major initiatives was to form the Supreme Court of Ohio Advisory Committee on Mental Illness and the Courts. She practiced as a trial lawyer before her years of service on the bench and is currently of counsel in the Columbus Office of Lawyers, Savers, and Lawyers in the East. Her practice areas include healthcare litigation and appellate work. I think she really enjoys the appellate advocacy piece, by the way. had a conversation with her with her. She serves as co-chair of the Attorney General's Task Force on Criminal Justice. She's now advocating for special courts to help returning veterans who struggle with post-traumatic stress and other issues. I feel certain that she will work well with Marty. Please join me in congratulating Evelyn Lumber Stratton. very, very exciting day because this is really one of the highest honors I feel that you could get. It's because it's your peers, and that means a great deal to me. As many of you know, I was a missionary kid growing up in Thailand. I went to boarding school during the Vietnam War, so all the people I knew that were Americans were either missionaries or GIs when I grew up. Unfortunately, my mother never let me date any of them, but <laughs> that's who I knew. But my parents taught me to give back. And so when I came to America to go to college, I just knew that that was sort of in my blood to do. But then I got this job on the Supreme Court, and sometimes I would sit in that office and say, how did a little missionary kid like me get a job like this? But I felt that I needed to do something with it that had some value besides just the job itself. And so that launched me on all of the different efforts I've made, but I haven't done it alone. I've had so many wonderful partners. I want to just share you one example that happened this week that tells you why I left the bench and are just focusing a lot on this issue. We have a lot of juveniles in our detention centers. There's a lot of work done nationally on juveniles in the detention centers. But when they're convicted as adults and sent to adult prison, here we can convict them as low as 14. 70% of them get out in five years or less, but they are the forgotten population. Nobody does anything with them special. There are lots of studies as to how bad the outcomes are when they go into adult prison, the rapes, the mental health issues, but they are forgotten. So three years ago, uh, some people from the Public Defender's Office and Action for Children and I got together with the Department of Corrections and said, we want to do something to reach these kids. And we came up with this dream of Unit 1 and Unit 2, where Unit 1 is where they're 14 to 17, they're required by law to be segregated. Unit 2 would be on the same property. And instead of shipping them the day they turn 18, whether they're in the middle of the school year or not, to 10 different prisons, they would go to Unit 2 and have continuity and get ready to come out if they're in that five-year or less category. Tuesday, I was invited to go down to the Correctional Reception Center. They had located a spot to move the population from Madison to there, had a Unit 1, a Unit 2, the staff were so excited, they presented us a slideshow with all the programming that they were going to do that was youth specific. And I came back so excited thinking it is really going to happen. We may be the first state that does this, but it's really going to happen. And those kids are going to have a chance. And that means so much that I can't tell you how psyched I am that that is actually becoming a reality. So those are the things that kind of charge me and make me excited. But I don't have hours to tell you about all the projects that you can get involved in and work on, so I'm just going to do some introductions. My first is my husband, Jack Lundberg. If you would stand. Come on. <laughs> he puts up. There's not many men that could put up with someone like me, and he is so supportive. Every step I've taken, he's given me support. I want to thank Pete and Donna Miller. Pete and Donna Miller have been with me in several campaigns. Now they are uh, partners on my veterans' work. Pete and Donna put out a newsletter every week. We've done it for a couple of years now. 
It used to be just a few pages because we could hardly find any articles about veterans and PS, PTSD and traumatic brain injury. And now that newsletter is about 22 pages long of just summaries. If any of you want to sign up for it, the Operation Legal Help Ohio desk has, uh, our booth has the ability. You look at it, see if you find it of interest, help in your work, and sign up. But thank you for your help. And Jessica Lagarge, she is a, uh, uh, came to me as an extern from Cooley Law School, stayed on for the rest of the year, helped me write the two articles that were already in the Ohio State Bar about veterans' courts and the wraparound. We have a third one coming about out uh, next month about Operation Legal Health, so she's been a real partner. And I wanted to thank her. And then the Boris family. I have to tell you, I didn't really plan to practice law when I left the bench. And Brad Senate called, and I, he was my first treasurer of my very first campaign, and I basically <laughs> humored him, said, okay, I'll have lunch. And I met with him and Bill Porter, who are also over here, and came home and said to my husband, something feels right about this. And so I do some appellate coaching and uh, appellate work with them and trial strategy, and I'm actually having a ball. It's really kind of fun, but I have to pretend it's harder than it is because they'll give me a stack of briefs and ask if I can have it read by next week. Well, my old job, I would have read that much by next week, so. Uh, but it's really been a pleasure. And in return, they have given me enormous support for all of the advocacy and work I do. And they gave me Diane Stash, the assistant extraordinaire who can keep up with every meeting that starts with two and turns into 10, corrects all my little mistakes because I'm going so fast I don't catch them. And so I thank you for welcoming me into the Boris family. There are so many things I could say about the veterans' work, but I think the easiest way to do it is just to have a few people be introduced and stand and all stay standing until I introduce the entire group. First of all, I think there are a few board members from the Ohio Military Veterans and Legal Assistance Program, which is a big mouthful, so we've renamed it Operation Legal Help Ohio. So anyone that's a board member, there we go, uh, I knew there were some. Is Mike Renner in the room? Mike, Mike is our fearless executive director. Then we got Duncan Auckland heads the Ohio State Bar Association Military Affairs Committee. Anybody who's a member on that, if you would stand. There. All right, and then the Attorney General Task Force on Veterans, so mostly non-lawyers. Then we also formed a new partnership with the Legal Aid Societies, and Angela Lloyd of the Foundation has been a wonderful partner, Jane Taylor as well, and they have gotten seven just, Equal Justice Works Fellows, seven young attorneys whose sole job is to work on veterans, and we're partnering with them to do the pro bono work. They'll do intake, they'll refer to our group, and they're here as well, so the seven Justice Fellows, would you stand? Back in, way back in there. And any all the legal aid folks who work on this issue, if you would stand, because I know there's a lot of legal aid too. Got some of those. And finally, we have 200 lawyers who have already signed up to be volunteers for pro bono work throughout Ohio. If any of you are here uh, that have signed up already, if you would stand, please. That means I have 400 more that can sign up. I love it. All right, we have a booth. You can sign up. We really need your help to make this happen. Thank you. Let's. That's just a little hint of all the many, many people who really are the workers who really make this all happen. Sometimes I feel like I get all the glory, but it wouldn't happen without these people willing to work in the trenches and really help those in need. And finally, I just want to say thank you to our veterans, all in this audience who are military, or active, or former, if you would stand. Please note who stood would you please thank them for keeping our country safe and for the sacrifice that they made. And thank you so much for this absolutely wonderful honor.